Hey guys, welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we were working on another exciting collaboration with KNA Custom Fabrics. They wanted to do this Atlantis. Um, I guess it's the spell book. Do not beat me in the comment section, but this is not like one of those movies that we watched <laughs> with the kids or growing up at all. So I'm not super familiar with this one, but I will have to watch it. Um, but anyway, we are making the spell book 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 whatever they decide to use in the movie and um anyway alex did the artwork we have some really cute zipper pulls there hopefully you guys can see them um this one we did squeeze in the zipper pocket on the inside i was like ah, finally so if you've done the o book or the recently deceased bag then you will be able to do this one so on the inside, it kind of opens halfway, and then on the inside, we have our little zipper pocket in there, and you've got the same zipper pulls. So it's a cute little pocket. Let me... Hopefully you guys can see there. There's a nice little pocket on the inside. And then Alex did, I, I don't know if this is like on the inside of the book in the movie or what, but Alex put that in the artwork as well. Okay, so we made this into a book bag. And in the video, I actually show you how to put this little handle on so that you can carry it around like a regular uh, book bag. Um, for me, I just like to put those on there so that when I put them in the store, it's easier to kind of display them. You've got your adjustable straps in the back. Um, I do suggest 40 inches for these, but it just depends on um, how big you like yours to be. I find that 40 inches is just kind of nice. Uh, for my size body, a 40 inch is pretty nice. So, let's get started. All right guys, in most of this video, you're gonna see me with my wrist guards on. I am absolutely fine. I just worked a little too much the week before and my wrists were crying. So, by the end of the video, I'm fine. Um, so what you're seeing me do here is I am taking my entire lighting piece and I am going ahead in one strip um, and interfacing all of my lining. That way it has saved me so much time instead of cutting out each individual piece, cutting out the lining of each individual piece and then ironing everything together. I'm just going ahead and ironing everything together and it saved me so much time. All right, so we've got our panels. We've got both of our outside panel and whatever um, base you decide to get it at. And then we've got our lighting panels. I went ahead and interfaced all of this. I'm going to wait to do my outside panels till I got, got everything cut out. Um, this panel actually goes on the inside of the lighting. Um, Alex did that. So <laughs> what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut down this line where the white border and then the actual print itself meet and just cut straight out all of your pieces. So once you get it out, uh, cut out, it'll look like this. Then what you're going to do is we're going to do our lining fabric. And what I like to do, just to make sure everything is the right size, you're going to be putting this back to back with this. I like to take the outside panel that it's going to match on my lining and then just line it up and then cut it out like that just to make sure that they're both the same exact size because sometimes things move around. Um, this is the tester panel, but uh, you can see the white lines on this side. I don't know if you can see it. This is the tester panel, so it shouldn't have that on yours, but sometimes if when you're ironing your fabric, it can kind of shift a little bit um, just so that you don't have to worry about that and you're not even going to see that because it's going to be... Um, the binding is going to be on top of it so you won't see it but if it happens and your fabric shifts a little bit at least it'll be make sure that everything is the same size if you lay them right down on top of each other all right so now what we need to do is we need to cut out the interfacing for our outside pieces um, and what i'm going to be using is decoville light i am going to be cutting it out so that it's a quarter of an inch shorter all the way around and if you want you can just measure the, the actual panel itself and then just take a half inch off the side and off the top and it'll be the right size that you need to be centered at quarter of an inch seam allowances all the way around.
All right, so we're gonna do one step really easily, uh, or really quickly, because we can go ahead and do it. We have all of our outside pieces done with our interfacing a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and I've done that to both the front. Um, the little silver trim should be on the outside. This is gonna be how your bag is oriented uh, when you're looking at it. On the back side of this one, you should have that panel. Uh, I guess the little faces, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a long time since I watched this movie. <laughs> so I'm guessing I faced it up the right way. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to base stitch all the way around with a four stitch length and just go ahead and just kind of base this together. Then we can move on to the inside zipper panel. Alright, so sorry. Um, base stitching is basically just sewing both pieces together with a nice long stitch um, an eighth of an inch away from the edge and that way it's just making it into one piece so that's all you have to work with. Now we're going to grab our one of our inside panels and then we're going to grab two of our zipper pocket lining pieces. I'm going to scooch that up for just a second. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this right. With the fabric oriented this way, hopefully you can see it, I'm just going to flip it over like that and then measure down an inch, centering my ruler like that. And then one inch away from the edge, I'm going to make a mark on both sides and then connect those marks. And then moving my ruler down half an inch, I'm going to make another mark. So you should have a nice little rectangle now. This is like a very tiny pocket, but it is an essentials pocket. All right, now we're going to take this and grab your other panel and we're going to measure down five inches. And that's a nice placement for your little tiny pocket. All right, right there is where we're going to place it. You can use a few little clips to keep her in place, but what we're going to do is we're going to sew around our little rectangle just like that so that we can make our zipper pocket opening. All right, so I've got my stitch length at a two and a half and I am gonna hold on to my tail as I start sewing so that I can pull the thread through the back. Pull your thread through. And then come back to the center where you started. All right, so we have got our little rectangle all sewn together. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you want to, you can go ahead and draw a line down the center. Uh, let me grab a pin so I can show you. All right, so you're gonna want to um, draw a line down the center, and then you're gonna want to make your little, there we go, triangles on each side. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up down the center, and I will try really hard to do this where you guys can see it. All right, so I'm just cutting down that line and stopping when I get to the end of the triangle. And I like using a different pair of scissors to get close to my stitches. Hopefully you guys can see it. You want to get close to your stitches, but don't cut your stitches. Just like that. Hopefully you can see it. And that'll help us turn this inside out. So we're going to do that on both sides. All 
and just like that. Now I'm going to take this to my ironing board and I am going to push this fabric in both the top and the bottom fabric. And then I'm going to iron this all down so that my little pocket, zipper pocket, is all ready to go. So let's go take it to the ironing board. All right, so we have got our zipper pocket placement in. You can see from the back, when we've ironed it, it looks really good. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to grab a nine inch zipper. Uh, I've got a number five zipper tape. And then Kim and Alex came out with these really, really cute pulls to go along with it. You're going to need three of these, but right now we just need one. And then what I did was I put some quarter of an inch um, double sided tape on each side so that I can kind of center my zipper and make sure everything's going to go where it needs to go and it's going to stay there. I always put my double sided tape on first before I put my zipper pull on because it is just, it gets weebly wobbly and yeah, it's a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our zipper left side first right side in next and then making sure that both of our teeth you can probably see it right here are right on top of each other there's not one standing up higher than the other one <laughs> and again this is why i like kim and alex's zipper pulls because they always go on like they're supposed to and i'm not fighting with them just a little plug sorry <laughs> all right next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our zipper uh we're going to lay our zipper tape down and take the paper off. Then we are going to lay our panel on top of it and try and get it centered. You're going to want to center it so that you have some of the zipper tape on this side and some of the zip zipper tape on this side and then just kind of lay it down. Then we're going to fold this up, take this double sided zipper tape paper off lay that back down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all the way around this now I am going to just go ahead and do it now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew um, an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around all right we're going to get straight we still have our stitch length at a two two and a half and then we're just going to sew an eighth of an inch all the way around the edges making sure that you've already put your zipper pull on <laughs> just make sure all right so we're going to do this right here so I don't have to move the camera too much today <laughs> all right so you have got your um, top stitching all done your zipper is in there really good it doesn't matter if you have it opened or closed uh, we're not going to be turning the bag through this Next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to grab our other zipper pocket panel. We're going to put right sides to right sides and then we're just going to clip around it and then sew all the way around it. And the way that I like to sew this particular way is I am going to skip clipping so that I can just go ahead and show you. <laughs> but the panel will be facing up towards you. I'm going to have these two panels going like this. I'm going to move this top panel out of my way as I sew and hopefully you'll be able to see it. And we're just doing like a, a quarter of an inch seam allowance by the way. Sorry about that. I always forget it. that panel out of our way and go around all four sides and close it up so now you can see from the back 
that it is all closed up. When you open it up, you can see inside of your pocket. It's really important to pay attention to which direction your fabric is going so that when you open it up, that one panel isn't upside down. Um, but let's take this back to our table and put our other piece uh, together. All right, so my pattern looks a little bit rough. And that's because I got completely finished with it, the whole entire bag, sent a picture to Alex, and Alex is like, Faith, it's upside down. So, <laughs> so now that I've got it here, this is the way it's supposed to be. The edge is going to go on the edge of your bag, like where the papers and stuff are, the uh, paper print on that side. So I'm going to take this side with the silver edge, fold it over, and put your zipper pocket going this direction. Your pocket will be going this way. Then you're going to baste stitch all the way around so that this piece becomes one piece and you can attach it to your um, gusset. All right, once you get all baste stitched, it should look like this. When you fold it, when you turn it over, your zipper pocket should be facing down and then your silver E should be on this side and you know that you've done it the right way this time. Now we're going to start working on our zipper gusset. First thing that you're going to need to do is grab yourself some number five zipper tape and two zippers. You don't have to have two, but I really like having two so that they kind of spread away from each other and they just kind of, to me, look nicer when you look at a bag. So I'm going to cut my zipper tape to the length of my zipper gusset. I have burned both of the ends because I do not want this coming undone. I'm going to take my zipper tape right side to the right side of my vinyl. And I'm going to clip all the way down and then I'm going to add my lining fabric. Alright, now that my zipper tape is on the outside, we're going to put the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper tape. So it looks like that, a nice little zipper sandwich. And when I say zipper sandwich in my directions or in a video, it's exactly what I mean. My little zipper sandwich. And then we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew at a quarter of an inch all the way down so that our outside zipper and lining are all together. So let's go do that. All right, so my sewing machine is kind of, well, she's a beast, okay? I bought her because I wanted to sew through really thick layers and not have to struggle at all. Um, but she's a beast in a good way. She's a good girl. All right, but with k and Custom Fabrics uh, vinyl, I have got to use a size 12 needle with my machine. Um, everybody's machines are going to be different, so you need to kind of check. If your needle is too thick and it goes through the vinyl and is um, puncturing it, um, you could end up, when you pull everything back, you could kind of end up with uh, wider, bigger holes. And then you could actually end up, it, it would look like crap. So. I've got a 12 needle in because I found that that's what works best with their vinyl. Um, and nothing wrong with their vinyl, it's just my machine wants to like, whoo. <laughs> and if you want the outside to look good, you kind of have to just make it, yeah. You have to put the right size needle in there for the vinyl that you're working on. And everybody's vinyl is different, their thicknesses. Um, so you just kind of have to figure out what you're sewing on and what you're sewing with to be able to know what needle you're going to need. So for me, I use a size 12 because my machine will eat cotton in a heartbeat. Once you get all of these layers all sewed together, the next thing that I like to do um, is take my lining fabric and my outside fabric, and you can clip these together, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put my stitch length back at a four. So let's do that. And then I am going to base stitch the sides together. It just makes it so much easier when we go on to the next couple of steps if the top fabric and the lining fabric are basted together. Uh -huh. 
All right, now with our needle down, we're gonna pivot and come back to our front with our needle down again. We're gonna top stitch where our zipper is. All right, so we got the one side done. I went ahead and I put my outer vinyl onto the top of the other side of my zipper tape and then my lining fabric right side of the lining fabric to the wrong side of my zipper and I went ahead and I clipped all the way down. All you're going to do is just sew it just like you did the last one. I've got my stitch length back at a two and a half. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna open it up again and put the wrong side to wrong side and then base stitch these two together. But I need to change my stitch length to a four. All right, let's go put our zipper pulls on. All right, so we have got our zipper gusset all done with the lining attached and everything like that. Now, I need you to grab this piece with the corresponding lining that is upside down, your side piece with its lining, and your zipper gusset. We got to do a little bit of work. So, this piece and this piece, the lining and everything, needs to be this width. I wanted you guys to be able to cut these down because some of us have different uh, some of us have different seam allowances. <laughs> when we're sewing, things can kind of move around and you know stuff happens. Um, so I wanted you to be able to have enough room that you could cut this down. So what I found that it depends on your um, seam allowance, but you need to measure this out and figure out what width this is and then cut your zipper gusset to that width. For me and mine, it should be about a quarter of an inch on each side. And then you're going to need to come and grab these pieces and you need to cut them down as well. So this one's going to just be half an inch on this side. Um, I know that's a little bit of extra work and it seems really frustrating but just sometimes, like I said, people have, when they're going to put their zipper gusset together, sometimes it can end up kind of wider or smaller, um, just depending upon their machine and the thing that they're following to be able to keep their seam allowance together. Um, so I just wanted to make it a little bit bigger so that you can cut them down to whatever size it is that you needed it to cut down to. So I'm going to lay this out, and I know that from looking at measuring this and then measuring this, I know that I need to take a quarter of an inch off here. So I am actually going to hold it down with that. I wouldn't put your zipper on, um, yeah, I wouldn't put your zipper t pulls on just yet. Do this first. Cut this down first. Make sure that your um, gusset is laying nice and flat. I actually have two weights that I have making it lay flat so that it'll end up the measurement that I actually want it to be. So I'm going to take it from this side. It's a quarter of an inch from that side. And then I'm going to turn this around so I can work with it. Lining it up on my board. And I don't want it to move so that's why I've got my weight there. And I'm kind of lining up my lines right here so that I can see the quarter of an inch there. Alright, so that's done. These two are now going to be the same size. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and the lining. I'm going to put them right on top of each other. Okay. And I know that this side piece is 5 inches wide. So I'm going to need to cut this to 5 inches wide. Alright, 
And that was about a half an inch, just like I figured. All right. Now, all of our pieces are the right side. I don't know why I keep putting them upside down. All right. We're going to need all of these pieces to move on to the next step. Right now, we're going to be creating the uh, gussets. So, first thing we're going to be doing is getting some clips. All right. Now, let's put our zippers on first. Again, I am using the really cute zippers from k and A's because they designed them to go with this bag. And I feel like I need to watch this movie again now <laughs> so that all of this will click. All right, so we're opening up our zipper. We're going to put our zipper on just like we did on our other one. Left side first, then your right side. Both teeth should be matching up right there, and hopefully you can see it. We're going to come down to this end. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to grab my other zipper pull. And I'm going to go left side first. And then my right side. And this does take practice, you guys. If you have a zipper jig, you know, use that. Whatever you need to use so that you can get your bag to do right. All right. Now we've got both of our zippers on there. Now let's work on the gusset. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these and it doesn't matter which way, but we're going to match up right side to right side. Okay, so right side to right side. And then we're going to grab the lining fabric that is the same size as this fabric. So you, you're going to have these two sitting on the side somewhere. So just leave those alone. I'm going to grab the lining that matches and we're going to put lining to lining, right side to right side. We're going to sew at a quarter of an inch here. So let's go do that. All right. So I went ahead and I sewed a quarter of an inch all the way across. And then what I did was I opened this up, pulled the outside fabric and the lining fabric away from my zipper gusset and then you're going to want to do about an eighth of an inch away from your seam here just go ahead and top stitch with a four stitch length now we're going to grab these two pieces that have been kind of sitting here waiting also in most of my videos when i go to do like my gusset and everything i tell you guys to go ahead and sew all the way down this do not do it <laughs> This needs to be open. This is how it's constructed. It's constructed a little differently than um, the rest of my stuff is. So just don't do the side basting like I normally do. Hopefully you haven't. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to come down to this end of our zipper gusset. We're going to grab this piece right sides to right sides. And we're going to clip these together. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch and then do your top stitching just like you did the other side so we're going to put right side of our lining to the right side of our lining of our zipper gusset we're going to sew a quarter of an inch then we're going to turn it inside out and top stitch all right so we're going to go ahead i've got my stitch length at a two and a half and we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch across all right now I've got my stitch length back to a four and I am going to take this outside flap and pull it away from my zipper gusset and then my gusset bottom I'm going to pull that away just like we did on the other side and we're going to top stitch this I know it's weird I promise it'll come together <laughs> an eighth of an inch away from the edge can't find my reverse switch for this thing. Okay, so you should have one really, 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 really long gusset. Okay, next thing that we're going to do, you've got this open end right here. I want you to let go of your lining, okay? Then I want you to come down to this end with your other gusset that's open and not connected to anything. And I want you to make your lining go away. <laughs> Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put these two together. 
if I can find my clips. Okay, we're going to sew a quarter of an inch across here. So let's just go do that real quick. Um, also, put your stitches back to a two and a half. Okay, I am also going to put my stitches back to a four length and I am going to top stitch across here. I'm going to take my seams and kind of push them to one side. And let's see, I top stitch. I put my seams towards the side that looks like a book, the uh, pages of the book, and I'm going to top stitch. Looks like that. Whichever side you top stitched on this side, make sure that you top stitched on this side. It just, I think it looks more uniform like that. All right. Now, we got to deal with the light after we get everything else. Okay. Woo. We got one gigantic circle. If you did it right, <laughs> you have one gigantic circle. Now we got to close this lining up. So what you're going to need to do is lay this out as flat as you can so you can tell what in the world you're doing. But you should be able to do right side to right side of the leftover gusset. So I've got my gusset lining on this side and I've got my gusset lining on this side. We're going to join them on the bottom now. And I've got to put my stitch length back to a two and a half. And then we're just going to find our thread, sew those together. Alright. I am also going to go ahead and just top stitch this with like a two, two and a half, just so that my seam lays flat. Um, I'm also going to pick this up. I want this seam to be facing the opposite way of that seam. Um, you can see where we top stitched it down and the seam is facing down. This seam needs to be facing up so that they'll butterfly on top of each other and it won't be so thick when I go to sew the um, gusset on. So I'm just going to push everything out of the way. And it's hard to maneuver because it is a circle. So, I apologize if it's hard to see everything. Alright, now, you should have a gigantic circle gusset. Your lining should all be connected. Alright, so sometimes you guys have said that you really like it when I do things twice, so I have to take pictures for the uh, written instructions and I figured I'd show it to you laid out so that you could see everything that was going on. So we put one of our gussets on this end with the lining, our other gusset on the other end and it really doesn't matter which side goes where because they're all going to be combined in a minute. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take these two ends. I know they're out of frame so you can't see. I'm going to bring them together and I'm going to clip them at the top so that they are together. Okay, now it'll make this easier visually. We're going to grab these two ends and we're going to bring them right sides together on this end. And it looks kind of crazy right now, I will admit that but this is how this gusset goes together so that there are no seams on the inside of your bag because we don't want no ugly seams. All right, so you should have two circles. They're kind of circles right now, but they will be circles in a minute. So what you're gonna do is we're going to sew this with a 2.5 stitch length or 2.5 stitch length and then a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then on this side, same thing, uh, 
2.5, the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Go do that, and then we'll come back and top stitch. I need to take pictures, and then I'll show you what I did. All right, so I went ahead and did the seams on both sides so that they became one big, or well, big circle on this side, big circle on that side. <laughs> then what I did is I top stitched, and I put my seams facing down, and then an eighth of an inch from the edge, I went ahead and top stitched. I did the same thing with this side. The next thing was base stitching. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take clips all the way around my gusset. On one side first, and then I'll do the other side. Base stitching these edges really helps, guys, when you're trying to put the front and the back panel on. It really does help, and I really, I cannot tell you how many hours it has spent, saved me from having to deal with two different fabrics trying to join them to the front and back panel. All I need to do now is one, one fabric. Alright, after you get everything clipped up, go ahead and base stitch down the sides an eighth of an inch away from the edge and then do that on both sides so that these be this becomes one big gigantic circle to have to work with. I hope that explained that a little bit better. Alright guys, for the next part of the video I'm going to be showing you how to put the straps on and the D-rings and all of that stuff and the panel is facing this way and needs to be facing this way. Your straps for your adjustable straps for the backpack need to go here and your D-rings need to go down here. It's going to be a little confusing but I didn't want to have to re-record everything. <laughs> so just make sure that your zipper is facing this way, your E is facing this way, this is the top of your bag. This is the bottom of your bag if you've done it this way. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to cut back to the next clip where I'm showing you how long your straps are going to be, um, all the materials and hardware that you're going to need. So just, it's going to look like this, <laughs> but it needs to be like this, okay? You're recording. All right, so I've got our gusset all ready to go. Next thing we're going to do is grab our back panel on the very top, and you can tell this is the top for our lining. We are going to make a little clip, a little mark, a little something so that we can tell where the center of this is. Next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get two 40 inch, uh, one inch by 40 inch thing of webbing. You need two one inch by three inch pieces of webbing, making sure that you burn your ends so that it doesn't come unraveled. This is completely optional, um, but I like putting a handle on my bags it just makes it a whole lot easier when I'm putting them in the store and for display purposes and things like that and people also like having a handle on the back of their bags so that is one inch by seven inches you're gonna need two one inch strap adjusters two one inch rectangle rings first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my straps I have already burnt the ends and I'm going to lay this kind of flat on my desk so I can kind of see everything. An inch, there's my little notch, hopefully you can see it. I'm going to, about an inch away, I'm going to put my first strap. An inch away on the other side, I'm going to put my other strap. Now, when I get to the sewing machine, I'm going to add these the uh, handle straps just like this right on top of those it's hard to get them to stay still being clipped. So I like doing it when I get to the sewing machine and that way they're not dancing around and moving around like that. Okay, so that's done. Next thing we gotta do is we need to get our rectangle rings and put our little straps through there. And then, let's see. And then an inch and a half away from the edge we're going to clip that here and then we're going to get our other rectangle ring and what did I say, an inch and a half like that 
Let's go to the sewing machine. We're going to base these on and base those on. All right, so I have got my stitch, my stitch length at a four. We're going to go ahead and just base stitch these on. I like adjusting that extra strap when I get here. I did change my thread out to black because I am going to go ahead and I am going to do the strap adjusters while we're here. All right, so you can probably see with this straight out, I'm just going to take it straight, just like that. I'm going to base those on. And if you couldn't see it from there, stay. All right, so that's how your little handle should look when you get done with it. All right, we're going to go back down to the end. We're going to get our rectangle rings out of our way. We do not want to accidentally sew them because you will break a needle and poke your eye out. So, basic those on. All right. Now, our straps. I'm going to go ahead while I'm here and go ahead and sew the straps in place so that I don't have to do it after I put the entire bag together so that the entire bag is in my way. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, with the strap straight, you're going to come down all the way to the end. We're going to put our strap on. And then we're going to put it through, just like that. Then we're going to take this end, keeping everything straight. We're going to put it through this rectangle ring right here. So hopefully you can see that's how it looks. Now, I'm going to take this extra that I got up at the top, and I'm going to push this out of my way. And then we're going to put this up through the top one and then back and then back through. Now I'm going to move this around. I wanted to do it where you guys could see it. But now I kind of have to move it around if I want to sew it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one little rectangle to make sure that this stays together. Um, I do need to turn my stitch length to a two and a half. And I also have to drive slow because I got my little 12 needle in still. Okay. So I know black on black is kind of hard to see, but I just did a little rectangle. That's it. That is it. And I'm going to do the other side and show you again how to do the hardware. If you've ever done like a an adjustable strap or anything like that, it's the same thing. So don't stress. I will show you again. Okay. And it should look like that when you get done. Um, 40 inches seems to be pretty good for all of my bags that I've done. Um, everybody that gets them kind of likes the 40 inches, so it's really, really up to you what you want to do as far as the um, length of the webbing. All right, let's do that again. So we've got our strap. We're going to go all the way down our strap, keeping everything nice and straight. I'm going to grab my other strap adjuster. I'm going to put it in this end on the top. I'm going to put it back down through the bottom, just like that. With it straight, I'm going to put it through my rectangle ring. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. So we're going to put it through the rectangle ring. And I'm keeping everything straight. You don't want to be twisting and turning. You want to keep everything straight. And now at this top one, I'm going to give myself some slack to make that come up. All right, now this tail is going to come up through the top one where you put it the first time and then back down to the bottom one. 
and these two are the ones that are going together. You need to make sure that the webbing that's coming up and through is not what you're attaching it to. So you don't want to attach it like this because then it, it won't work. <laughs> you need to attach to the one that's coming through the rectangle ring down at the bottom. If you if it looks like this, then you've done it right. And you can leave as much slack as you want on the bottom to sew through. Um, normally I leave about like an inch and a half or so. And then I just make, can you see that? Okay. And then I just make a rectangle. Uh, normally if it's like a inch and a half webbing, I'll go ahead and put a little X through it. But with the one inch webbing, there's not really any need for all of that. All right guys, so in the video I've showed you how to do your straps, how to put your straps on and everything. Um, I know that I'm kind of like chopping in here and there to kind of show you guys what to do, but I just want to make sure that there's nobody at the end that's like, it's backwards! So, make sure, making sure that that is the top um, and that is the bottom. And how, if your panel looks like this, your zippers like that, zippers like that, we're good, okay? Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our gusset. I've made some middle notches here on the center of my spine of my gusset. And then this connection in your gusset kind of acts like a center mark for the other side. So if you haven't already, make sure that you put center marks in the center of your back panel as well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to match up the center marks. I am putting the spine next to the side that does not have the silver. And I will show you in just a second. Okay. So the spine is on this side, not the silver side. The silver sides on both the front and the back are going to be connected by the pages. So on this side, we're going to want to take the center line and mark it up with our center mark on this side. And then the tops and the bottoms are the things that you're going to kind of have to work out because there's not a way, there wasn't a way to make a center mark in the center of our zipper because it um, goes down the side of our bag. So I kind of just make it to where it looks like it's centered and start clipping and then if I need to adjust it, um, I do that. We're all clipped up. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to base stitch all the way around using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a four stitch length, making sure that this is what your bag looks like before you go do it. Now the rest of the video, the thing is going to be backwards. Just ignore it. <laughs> as long as it looks like this right here, you're good to go. All right, now we're going to sew the gusset on. I have my stitch length at a four. I have also moved my zipper pull kind of towards the center so that it, it's not all the way to the edge and I could accidentally like hit it with my needle or something. So highly recommend that. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I just, I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? I better say something. Um, I do have my blue thread in that matches the waterproof canvas that I'm using for my uh, binding. So whatever you want to use for binding, I would go ahead and switch. I still have my 12 needle in. All right, now I have got my waterproof canvas. It's one inch. I'm gonna fold that in half and just make a little snip like that. 
and then I'm going to start. I like to start mine at the top so that you don't see it like the uh, scene that it kind of creates. I like to start at the top because you necessarily won't see that towards the top. So. And then I'm just going to go all the way around. This is actually perfect because my waterproof canvas is either 56 or 54 inches, something like that. And it goes all the way around. So that gives you an idea of what you need as far as binding goes. That's what you're going to need. And then I do take my corners when I'm binding. And I push up like a quilt and then push down and then you have that little mitered corner if it'll do like it's for there we go and then I put my little clips next to it so it'll stay like that when I go to sew it so I'm just gonna go all the way around and get it ready to go alright so when we first started we did an eighth of an inch just to kind of base everything together now we're going to be doing a quarter of an inch and I still have my zipper in the middle so that I don't have to worry about it and then I'm just going to kind of follow my tape around I'm hanging on to my strings or my thread when I get started and then just go around the back All right, now we got to figure out <laughs> logistic wise how to put the front in because the front is supposed to be facing like this, like this is on the outside rim. So what I figured out is I'm going to take this and just go and you can tell if you're doing it right with the faces all facing you. And then I am just going to go ahead and clip all the way around this. All right, I didn't want you to have to sit there and wait for me to like ride the struggle bus and get all of my sides all matched up. So it's all clipped together. Let's go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew it like this and go all the way around. got it all attached you guys are almost done I promise went ahead and got my other thing a waterproof canvas it's uh, one inch by the length if I hadn't said that before um, and then I cut it at a diagonal just to kind of cut that bulk out so that when I'm folding it over like this you don't have a bunch of bulk all right so let's clippy clip All right, so we got it all clipped and ready to go. I'm gonna flip it over. I still have my stitch length at a four. I'm gonna jam around and we're almost done, guys. You did it. <laughs> All right, now we just need to turn it inside out. So we're gonna grab our zippers and open them up like this. And then what I like to do is take our corners and just kind of push those in. I'm gonna come to this side and push those corners in. Right, guys so what did you think I hope it was an easy one for you guys um, to get through because there's not a whole lot to it with just the binding on the inside um, I'm so so glad we finally got a pocket <laughs> I feel like every bag just needs a pocket somewhere so I'm really glad that we were able to get that in um, on this panel hopefully future panels will have more pockets so we'll see um, but anyway 
I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Or if you want to subscribe and see some of the other cool stuff we have coming up, um, just make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of that. If you have any questions, comments, something wasn't clear, um, just let me know in the comment section down below. There are also written instructions. Um, I will link everything down below. There will be a link to this pattern. There will be a link to the written instructions. All of that stuff will be down in the description down below. Um, if you haven't seen the written instructions yet, you guys really should check those out. I take step-by-step -step pictures of everything that I'm doing so that if you don't want to hang around, you know, your TV or your computer, you can just grab your written instructions and follow along putting this together. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks again for joining FaithWorks Designs. Bye, guys.